University of California is implementing a quota system to make sure it does not admit too many Americans. Under a newly announced plan, the UC system's Board of Regents is capping out-of-state U.S. student population at each school. 18% is the number. Guess who's not capped, though? Illegal aliens, who not only have an easier time getting in, but are entitled to in-state tuition rates once they get there. Hulisa Arce was an illegal alien who used forged documents to get a job at Goldman Sachs. She later obtained legal status. She married an American citizen. Now she serves on the board of directors of the National Immigration Law Center. She joins us tonight. So it does seem to me, no matter how conflicted you feel about immigration, you would never be in favor of a state school capping admittance of American citizens but in effect giving preference to illegal aliens, why would any sane person be in favor of that? I don't think anybody is in favor of that. And we have to be really clear mm. about what this new rule really says. And what this new, this new rule says is that it's capping the number of out-of-state students. It never says that they're capping the number right of U.S. citizens. It's simply capping the number of students that are coming from out of the state. And frankly, rightly so, because the regions are tasked with the fiduciary responsibility to take actions that are in benefit of California residents. And what this audit that they did found is that universities were accepting a larger number of out-of-state residents and lowering the standards of admission for those residents, which was, of course, hurting California residents. So no one's in favor of capping well, U.S. citizens, uh, but what this does well, is it caps US the number of state students. Wait, but, oh. Right. And that's common at a lot of different schools. University of North Carolina does that. I right. think Virginia does the same under pressure from the legislature. But you still have a situation where American citizens are explicitly capped and illegal aliens are not. So, like, why wouldn't, as long as we're capping the percentage of a kind of person who can be at the school, why wouldn't you go ahead and give preference to Americans over people who are here illegally? Like, why wouldn't you think that yeah, way? I don't I understand. Well, I think you're comparing apples to oranges, and that's where I think that's where maybe you're you you lack the understanding for this because uh, you know the students that are the undocumented students that can go to text to uh, California schools are considered residents of California, and they've established residency by living in California for three years or longer, and they've established residence by graduating from what? a California residence okay. from a California high school, which understand. means they are. California Cal residents. I, I get it. But but since we're informing each other about the facts, California is not a country. Right. It's a state. It's one of 50 of those. It's part of the United States. Mm -hmm. And people who are here illegally in one state are illegal in all states because they're not U.S. citizens. So again, isn't it fair for a state school, a government school, to put its own citizens first? Isn't that why we have governments? So they can look out for their citizens. Does this not make sense? Yeah. No, no, what you're saying does make sense, but I think that what we're missing here is that you're right that California is part of the United States, but as we know, and I think your viewers would agree, For the moment. states have certain states have certain rights, right? And states have the ability to pass laws in those states. And California passed AB 540, which is the law that allows undocumented students to attend public universities and pay in-state tuition. This law was passed in 2001 with overwhelming support. So in that sense, the residents of California have spoken and they have said that it's in the best interest of California okay. to let undocumented students pursue a higher education. Right. To give preference to people here illegally over American citizens. Can you think of another country that well, would do not, this? Does any other well, country do this? we're not talking this? about the United States. We're not talking about the United States, right? We're talking about a specific law we're talking about the in biggest California state in the country. undocumented students. Right. And okay, it, but, but let's, 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 let's not dodge the question, though. Can you think as a... Because I think the, the, the philosophical underpinning of it really matters here. Government exists to serve citizens. There's a difference between a citizen and a non-citizen. Doesn't mean the non-citizen is bad, but it means he's not number one on the priority list for government by definition or shouldn't be. So can you think of another place on planet Earth where a government would put the needs of a non-citizen before a citizen? Well, I can think of a scenario where the regions of the state of California have to act in the best interest of Californians. 
and that is what's happening in this case. If we come back up for a second, state universities exist to benefit the residents of each of those states, right? The, uh, the University of Texas, where I went to school, uh, was established to serve Texans. In California, okay. the state universities are established for that. And by the way, these but I, these I, wait, uh, can, can universities stop you are I just I figured, I figured out the rhetorical trick you're using. It's I'm a little so, so it took me a while. You're using the term resident, which well, is different from citizen. A resident is just someone who happens to be somewhere at a moment. I, I well, can be a resident of Buenos to Aires live on vacation. And to be, well, live to somewhere, be but completely you're not a citizen. clear about what I'm saying is that in order to be a resident in California, to pay in-state tuition at these institutions, you have to have lived in California for three years or more, and you have to have graduated from a California school. And by the way, the UC system is subsidized by taxpayers. Undocumented people oh, in I'm California aware. pay three billion dollars every year in taxes. So it makes and sense take that much they more than that in services, as you know, get. which is this. I mean, if, look, if, if you want to have a math argument with me, I will win on that. I can promise you. But I want to have just very quickly a philosophical question. Do you think there is a meaningful difference between someone who's here illegally and someone who is a citizen? You call them, we're all residents here, but some residents can, I don't know, vote, own firearms, and some can't. That's a meaningful distinction. Do you acknowledge that distinction or is it all just nonsense yeah but you. that's not what we're talking about here right like i came on the show to talk about <laughs> this law in california <laughs> right. and whether it discriminates well, against US citizens which it's interesting it doesn't right like it doesn't discriminate oh, it against, doesn't uh, it's like US affirmative citizens. action we're all winners except some more than others right i love it thank you so much well, for joining us talk, <laughs> and we're talking about affirmative action that's a completely i hope you'll come on for that because i'm sure that. you'll tell us we have people everybody wins okay we gotta go Lena Dunham has some thoughts about Father's Day, and because we are a fallen, deeply sinful society, her opinions are now considered news. Sorry, 